Hi everybody and welcome back to the Talking Wolves YouTube channel for what is going to be a series of tactical analysis videos with myself Gully uh, at Mollingmew Musings on Twitter. Please do give us a follow and you'll follow all my content that I share on there as well. But um, throughout the season I'm going to be having a look at Gary O'Neill's Wolves from a tactical perspective uh, on the Talking Wolves channel like I say. And um, for the first time um, this season, this coming season, we've managed to have some time watching uh, the team live in some televised friendlies against the likes of West Ham, Crystal Palace and RB Leipzig uh, during the Stateside Cup. Um, headline is that um, we put in some really good performances, two wins out of three, um, seven goals scored, which is, I think, something really pleasing uh, from the fans' perspective. We, we've all been looking forward to a more progressive style. Um, and I'm going to touch on quite a few things during this video that point towards us being a more ambitious team and um, a little bit more attacking player and um, I think the key element of that is the fact that Gary O'Neill's finally had some time to embed his ideas uh, for the first time as a coach um, he's had a pre-season to be able to plan effectively and, and attack um, the first game of the campaign and uh, really implement um, some ideas from his side which I think we can all be very excited about and um, to begin with I just want to um, have a look at Kind of the basis of the formation that we're, we've been implementing in in the stateside cup um so i'm going to go to my tactics board here just to quickly explain what uh, gary o'neill has been doing uh, from a systems perspective i think when you, you think about your 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 lineup graphics that um the 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 news outlets use the likes of sky sports bbc sport this is probably what you would say you will see um when it comes to how they set us up it's a four two three one um very much um kind of basic uh in, in terms of the way that this would be interpreted at this point but in actuality i think there are a couple of things that that really need to be outlined um, in terms of the way we've played so if i think about out of possession in in the first instance i think it's much more like this uh, a bit of a 4-4-2 with um the center forward who's obviously been Jürgen strand larsen to begin with uh in, in those friendlies um, leading the press and a number 10 attacking midfielder who plays just off him so far um, tended to be uh, Huang Ki Chan or Mateus Cunha who obviously um, picked up an injury during the first game just playing off him and helping him to, to deal with that press and being quite compact in that 4-4-2 shape and I think it's important to, to note that this is basically what we did last season um, out of possession as well um, it's relatively rudimentary. It's all about spacing in between the midfield and the defence um, and making sure the teams can't play through the lines. Um, but I think the step change here, which I'll go into, is that we've looked to be a little bit more ambitious with the press. Um, in terms of in possession, um, I think this is where Gary's tried to be a little bit more expansive, a little bit more, more experimental. And um, the width of the, of the team is, is, is really quite interesting in terms of how he's managed to um, to maintain it and, and, and which players are key to that. So Strand Larson obviously sent, tending to be the, the key point of contact at the top of the pitch, um, really important in that position. What I would say is we, we're almost playing with two number 10s and um, the player off the right flank has tended to tuck in uh, much more. And the, the player on the left has played high and he's played wide. Um, that means on the right side, the right back has tended to offer the width and our um, defence has turned into essentially a back three in possession where the left back is, is inverting slightly. The other two centre arse have shifted across. Um, and this has created basically a 3-2 kind of build-up shape, which means you've got a bit of cover if you lose the ball, what we call rest defence uh, quite often. And there's a box midfield here, which allows teams who may be set up in a three to be overwhelmed and you can play um, relatively intricately. Um, with with these technical players and, and progress the ball through that way. Um, I don't think this is something that is um, unfamiliar to people now. We see a lot of teams setting up in this way, um, not to compare us to them, but it's, it's the kind of thing that Man City tend to do. They tend to overload the um, the back line with five players. So in, uh, to use us as an example, in possession, you're, you probably are likely to see the right back pushing all the way up against the, the defensive line of the opposition left winger doing the same on the opposite side and then your two number 10s and the and the striker again 
playing against that that defensive line. Um, just to to share the examples through throughout the friendlies um, of this in action. I mean, you can even see from kickoff um, in the in the Crystal Palace game that I've highlighted here the way that this is kind of manifesting itself. Um, so you can see Pedro Lima on the on the top of the picture, slightly more advanced, obviously the widest player in that in that shape. The midfield quite narrow, so ostensibly the right winger, which was uh, Jean Rene Bellegarde here, um, tucking in quite close. To Wanda Chirewa is it, as the number ten, and then Rodrigo Gomez being that that, that kind of wide player on the left hand side. Um, going back to out of possession, um, you'll often find us in this kind of position where the back four is is quite set. We I mean it we haven't quite gotten into our shape here yet, but you can kind of make out the four four two as well um, as as Leipzig look to build up uh, build up some play. Um, in terms of us in possession and build up, I think there's a degree of flex about the way we want to operate. Um, and Gary O'Neill has been quite keen to make sure that we're able to find a free man when we when we got set up possession. It's something that I think we struggled with a little bit towards the end of last season, particularly. Um, and you know, there's a, there's a number of ways we've we've gone to, uh, we've tried to go about this. And I know I've kind of set us up in a three-two shape. Um, in the in the formation initially but you will see us sometimes in the back four and then we'll flex from there so you can see here our back four set up our two central midfielders in front of them and this has a degree of um kind of dynamism in terms of players moving around and making sure that we can find a free man on this occasion you can see mario lamine has actually dropped into the defensive line and what that means is and, and this is something that has been a little bit of a discourse on on social media i've seen ryan Ait nuri often tucking in as like a third set and a half as a left uh, from that left back position and um, we know he's very good on the ball we know he's able to play in advanced areas and some people have suggested that this is a, this system will stop him from actually um getting on the ball in the areas that we want him to the fact of the matter is if lamina is dropping in then that gives him that extra bit of license to push on and he's done that in, on this occasion here um you can see also lamina dropping in more traditionally between the two center backs um, which has also allowed Aitnuri to take up a wider position, um, and then you 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 tending to build up uh, in through wider areas as opposed to through the middle of the pitch, um, and then what that means is you, you can see where Aitnuri was in the previous picture. He's received the ball from Totti. Um, Leipzig have looked to press, and we know with Aitnuri's ability to to take people out the game with a dribble, he's gone to beat a man, and that's opened up the game entirely for us. Um, and basically has left a, a, a transition situation um, with Rodrigo Gomez driving towards the penalty area. You can see we've taken a few players out of the game. But I think the, the key bit here is um, Huang on the previous image. Sorry, I'll go back to that. He's not dropped in too deep. Um, he hasn't gone too close to the ball. And what that means is when Ait Nuri is beating his man, um, he's actually there to, to support the attack. And we've got four players attacking the box, notwithstanding the guy who's probably out towards the right-hand side, the extra number 10, and also the right-back who will be out of picture here, who will also be likely to be um, attacking the, the penalty area. So that supports um, additional bodies in attack, basically, the way we're trying to set up. Not having too many players uh, join in the build-up to, to drop too deep. We had that quite a bit last season, I think. Um, and I think... It's a slight problem when someone like Mateus Kuni is in the team because he likes to come towards the ball. But I think Huang is, is good at making vertical runs, making um, space for other players. Um, and I'll come on to that as well and how he's been able to um, able to be effective in a different way to Mateus Kuni in that number 10 position. Um, what I have seen as well, there is a, there's no shyness in terms of going direct. Um, a couple of positive examples here which have led to good chances being created. Um, Interestingly enough, with Gonzalo Guedes playing in the number nine position, um, obviously he's not a player you would associate with playing with a back to goal and fighting centre backs. So clever movement, quality of passing is really really important when you have some from someone like that in the at the top end of the pitch. Um, and you can see straight away here Dan Bentley playing a ball into a channel for a, a curved run from Guedes um, and Santi Bueno, who I think in possession has been the best defender on show in pre-season so far and um, playing a really nice ball into the channel for Guedes to run onto. Um, and I think 
we like I said, we 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 did struggle a little bit with with building up play towards the end of last season. And I think oh, Gary is quite keen to ensure that it's not uh, an absolute mandate that we have to play um, short when we're building, but we're, we're building up safe possession. You know, if the option is there to go long, if the option isn't there to go short, then there has to be a longer option um, to to pass to. Rodrigo Gomez is also important in that regard in terms of keeping his uh, position high and wide and either dragging a full back out with him to create that kind of space that Geddes is run into or having uh, the space to receive the ball if, if the fullback is looking to tuck in um, and play much more narrow. Um, I've talked about us pressing high. Um, I think this is uh, going to be a big step change for us uh, this season. And this also ties into the the idea of playing characteristics and the type of defenders that you have at your disposal. You can see here we've swarmed, um, I think it's Maxwell Corne uh, of West Ham, in terms of well, he's received the ball into feet and our centre-back is really tight to him, kind of 20, 20 yards into the West Ham half of the field, up alongside his central midfield. There you've got the right back going to press as well. And you've almost left Totti Gomez in a bit of a 1v1 if the ball gets turned over. But when you've got players like Mosquera, a lot of players like Totti Gomez who are able to cover space, I think that obviously creates a little bit more comfort than, say, if it was someone like Craig Dawson. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised um, to see people like Mascara and Totti uh, starting the season um, in, in those positions, in, especially in games that we're looking to try and um, impose ourselves on the opposition. Um, similar situation in this other image here as well. Again, really swarming the, um, the opposition forward and uh, not giving them an option to play forward at all, um, which obviously gives us, first of all, the opportunity to win the ball higher up the pitch and create something, um, but stops teams from building up um, and allowing them the opportunity to, to have safer possession and um, play out easily. So looking forward to us um, implementing that style, a bit more intensity, um, but a bit more of an understanding obviously needed as well with, with everyone. Um, that can't happen if you have midfielders that aren't willing to go and press, forwards that aren't willing to go and press as well. It has to happen as a unit and each um, each. Uh, function within the team you know is, is obviously symbiotic it, it has to has to all happen in, in unison um the final thing i wanted to touch on was a partially tactical i think but partially relationship building uh, part of the team which is obviously another really important part of pre-season and this involves a new player with a current um with a, a player who's been with us for a while um linking up and being really really effective um, and that's rodrigo gomez and Juan Ki chan if i go back to the um the tactics board that i shared with you very quickly um i think this area of the pitch um in particular is going to be quite a profitable place for us mateus cunha is likely to be the man that plays in that position um the majority of the time alongside what looks like it's going to be um, rodrigo gomez i do think someone like Huang could also perform that function chiquinho has shown flashes of his ability to play out there so far. Um, but I think it's likely to be between Cunha Huang and Rodrigo Gomez, who who basically take up these positions out here. And the key bit, I think, with Rodrigo and Huang is that they both like to, what we call, create vertical movements um, into space. You know, Huang is more than happy to run away from the ball as opposed to come towards it, as is Rodrigo Gomez. And they're both kind of self selfless movers in that regard they're not always going to receive possession when you do that you know you might run offside you might um you know take yourself away from being an option sometimes but what it does do is it creates uncertainty within the back line it creates space for other players and that's really really important so that we can actually build attacks and build moves and give defenses much more to think about um than we have done in the past uh Quick couple of examples here in the Leipzig game, which I think you know really uh, bore a hell of a lot of fruit. Um, you can see straight away these runs can often be um, almost dead ends. You know, nobody really wants to be running into the corners, but if you have support and you have uh, a synergy with another another teammate, which Wang and Rodrigo Gomez seem to have, um, you can you can obviously uh, produce quite a bit with it. You can see Wang making the run into the channel. Rodrigo um, playing that one-two with him and then he gets into a good position. The box um, should have done better with the shot, I think, on this occasion. But 
that was a warning sign for Leipzig. Um, again, Gomez attracts the full back out. Huang makes a run into the channel with what's likely the more less mobile centre back as well, which I think is important to in terms of understanding how our players are able to create separation from their marker. Um, he chops back in, he crosses the ball, and uh, this leads to the second goal, uh, which was a really nice move as well. Um, and then finally, the the third goal is another way that we created. Um, this is another avenue, the same avenue again, that obviously created that goal. So the interesting thing about this, if you look in the first image, um, we all saw the build-up between the likes of Semedo, Gomez and Neto. You know, three players all came onto the pitch at the same time, know each other quite well now and come back from, from international duty. But what they did with their, their kind of slightly more intricate, closer, um, shorter passing is they attracted a load of players over to 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 try and um, stop them from progressing possession. It's it's a 5v4 in Leipzig's favour, obviously, in that first image. We're able to play out. Gomez beats a player. And then we've got, essentially, Gomez holding that width again, out in space, a 2v2. They create the 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 the, um, the movement, the sharpness of movement, outdoes their markers, and then we score a goal again. So, you know, it's um it's nice to have these patterns available to us. You know, some of it's tactical, some of it is instinctive with some of the players. And I think look, the the best managers in the world they they have to marry the two together. You can't be too dogmatic with your system and say you you have to do all of these steps to make sure that we eventually get into a position to have, to have a shot at goal. You know, football doesn't work like that. There are opposition teams, opposition analysts that will read you once you've done this two, three, five, game, four games in a row. And, you know, the, I don't think Gary O'Neill is, um, he's not implementing a system that we want to be too tied to in terms of exact shape, exact movements. Um, you know, it's not like we're doing uh, Brighton things in terms of build up um, all that closeness in terms of the middle of the pitch. But what he is doing is providing a number of platforms for the players to go out and play. Um, we've got high level technical footballers now. We've got options. We've got speed. We've got verticality. Um, and all these things married together create the kind of goals that we saw scored against Leipzig, the kind of goals that we've seen in the other games as well. Um, overall, I think the three performances on the whole, despite losing against Palace as well, were really, really promising. Um, I think you know, there was some discourse from Palace fans suggesting that they weren't the better team uh, in, in, the, in that second game as well. So um, a lot to be optimistic about. I think there's still likely to be a bit of movement in the squad um, to um, get it into the perfect shape. Um, I think the most likely thing for me is, is another centre-back coming in and be interesting to see what kind of profile that player is. Um, but I think the signs are good. Um, we have a very tough running um to start the season but um i also think to a certain extent playing the bigger teams early on is much better than once they've built up ahead of steam and, and really got into their groove in terms of playing so arsenal first up um probably isn't as daunting a task as it might have seemed when the fixture list came out especially with the way we've been playing so looking for, forward to see how gary sets us up against viacano at the weekend and, and that gives a big clue as well about lineup and and then obviously um, how we look to play down at the Emirates on the first weekend of the season. So um, look forward to seeing you soon. Um, like, subscribe, and, and make sure you, you you drop us a comment. I'm more than happy to have a discussion about um, the way you want to see Wolves play in the comments too.